Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Amalgamash, and today I want to show you a very useful, very powerful, and even very dangerous tool that is bundled with RPG Developer Bakken. It is a tool that will allow you to take a 2D image and convert it into a generated 3D map. Using this tool, you can even currently break through RPG Developer Bakken's limitations of map sizes that are 256 wide by 256 deep. But we'll get to that in just a second. To get started, I'm going to go into a paint program. Don't laugh, I'm just going to use paint.net, and we are going to color onto a 50 pixel wide by 50 pixel tall canvas. Now, Bakin will actually take every single pixel and convert it to a tile. So the map that we're going to end up with by creating this file will be 50 tiles by 50 tiles. So I'm just going to color some different colors on here, different shapes, being very arbitrary and very experimental. And we're gonna see what this looks like when we try to generate a map from it. This gets saved as a PNG file, and I'm going to save it to my desktop for the ease of finding it. Back in Bakin, all we have to do is make sure that we are in the map editor under the master menu, and in the map list, we will click the add button. Now the create map menu will appear, but instead of messing with any of these default properties, we're just going to click image loading. We can immediately select the map that we have made and click open. And now you can see it has been generated. This didn't quite give me the result that I expected. We seem to have a lot of black where I thought that I would actually have some terrain. But we are made aware of a few things. For one thing, it looks like it will assign tiles to color values based on red, green, blue, combinations of red, green, blue, red, green, red, blue, or green, blue. It's probably looking for very specific color values. So if you are using colors in your paint program to paint terrain, you may wish to use color values that are say 255 red, zero green, zero blue in order to hit this red requirement. Or for the red plus blue tile, if you want to generate this, you'll use a color value that's 255, zero, 255. You can actually take and change these tiles by clicking on them and then in that way you can tell Bakking to use different tiles for this generation. You can also select a different image and I'm gonna show you an image that I had a little bit more luck with. So this one here is not too bad. I still have a hole in the middle because of the color that I put there. And I don't quite like all this waterfall terrain everywhere, so I'm going to click on that tile and select a grass tile. All right, that already looks a lot better. Okay, so I'm not actually sure why such the huge disparity between the floor of the map and the tallest elevation, but we'll hit OK. And now we're back in the map editor, and it's much easier to zoom around this map and edit things. So we have actually made this map from a 2D image. All right, now we're going to break things a little bit, or at least bend them. I've actually created a 300 pixel by 300 pixel version of my channel icon, and we're going to open that. That means that the map that is generated from it will be 300 tiles by 300 tiles. And while that's generating, I just want to show you in my calculator here that that means it's going to generate 90,000 tiles, and that's why you should be very careful about using a feature such as this one. Once you get into where it's like a thousand by a thousand, you're generating a map that's a million tiles. Bakin may behave very unexpectedly or even crash depending on your computer specs. So this has definitely been generated and it doesn't look too interesting, but let's hit OK. And it may take a while to load because 90,000 tiles. And that is it. We can now zoom all the way out and see my magnificent caricature face in all of its cartoony glory. This map on my PC does take a little bit of time to kind of move around. There's definitely noticeable lag, but I want to prove to you that it is 300 by 300. The inspector that follows the mouse cursor gives you the terrain information, specifically its X and Y coordinates. And when we go all the way to the right side of the visible map, you can see that the X coordinate gets to 300. And even beyond when we go beyond the perimeter, the Z coordinate will give us a value of 300 at its edge as well. So this map is definitely 300 by 300. Now I don't want people to depend on this bug staying in Bakin. It's very possible that it will either be patched out or made into a feature. And when either of those things happen, there's a possibility that your maps that are in this size could break. So this might be a lot of fun to play with and experiment with for now. But don't be surprised if they end up patching this one out. Who knows? They might not though. Anyway, that's all the time I have to go over map generation. Thank you very much for watching, and please let me know how I'm doing with these tutorials and what you'd like to see next. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.